Hi everybody, my name is Chris and this is Sojourns. Welcome to the sewing room. Today I have something that I think you're going to really find fun. It was a really fun project for me. As you see, I'm not surrounded by any makes right now because I don't want to spoil the surprise. But I do have a full tutorial coming and something really fun. So you know how we're always perusing Pinterest or catalogs or anywhere you get inspired for fashion or by fashion. I'm going to make that sometime or I'm going to try to recreate that. I wonder if I can do it or how can I make that my own? So I finally took up the challenge. I found a sweater on Pinterest that I really liked. And when I looked at it, I figured, okay, I think I can do this. So before we get into it today, I want to just thank you again, all those who are new, maybe joining me for the first time. Welcome to Sojourns. We journey into sewing here. Pattern reviews, tutorials, I love to do tutorials. I always give you a tip or a trick during our Sew so You Can segment. Today, that will be all about installing and working with grommets. There's a hint. <laughs> anyway, thank you for subscribing. Uh, if you're just visiting me today and you'd like to subscribe, just click the little subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you'll get a notification when I post my next video so you don't miss anything. I'm going to put up a picture of the inspiration photo of the sweater that I found. I believe this was on Pinterest and I thought I can do that. Well, let me try it. So here it is. It's cute, right? Okay, the things that attracted me to this were the grommets across the top and the lace detail. That's really the feature of this, right? And of course, the bishop sleeves. Bishop sleeves are really popular, and I've always loved them. I think they're super flattering and really feminine. That fits my style. So today, I'm going to take you from start to finish. As you can see, it's a dolman sleeve sweater, and then attached to that are bishop sleeves. So the first thing I thought was I need I needed a dolman sleeve pattern to start with. That would make recreating this a lot more simple. I started with the La Bella Donna from Love Notions because it is a dolman sleeve pattern. It is not fitted. You know, you're going to want to have something that has positive ease, not negative ease for this pattern. So the Belladonna was the place to start. So let's get into it. Chris's Pinterest remake. If you look at the inspiration picture, you will see that this weaved hack, this lace hack they were going to do starts in the upper chest, just under the arm side of where that dolman sleeve comes in. So what I've done is I've taken a quilting ruler and I marked a line, a straight marker line, from the arm side to the folded edge. And then I sliced it. I've already done that. This is where we are going to put our binding and our lace effect. We will not need to add seam allowance to either of these edges. We're going to bind those, but we don't need to add seam allowance because we're not trying to get the same length. It's actually going to be spread apart a little bit from the lace effect, in which case then we will add a little length to the back piece here in order that the side seams will line up. And for this one, I'm not doing that split hem hack. I'm going to take this and just use the curved hem. So I've laid this on the fold. I'm going to cut two separate pieces, but I can just cut right there. So I'm going to cut the, we're going to call this the upper bodice and the lower bodice. So this is for the front piece only. As you see here, the La Bella Donna uses the same pattern piece for both front and back. The only difference is the neckline changes. For the front, I'll just, I cut it through here and I'll just fold this over and I'll follow that line for the front. And then when I go to cut the back, I will just tuck this in here, put a little pattern weight on it, and I'll just cut here. But for now, we're only dealing with the front. This, So I'm just going to cut one of those on the fold. Well, actually I'm going to cut one of each on the fold. Pattern pieces cut out. We have our upper bodice and our lower bodice. The length across the bodice at the cut is 28 inches. We're going to do the same trim or same grommets on the upper and the lower, and they're the same length, so 28 inches. I'm going to cut two binding strips. I want them to be one and a half 
inches, and then I'll show you how we're going to deal with that. You'll need two, one for the top and one for the bottom. Here I have my bodice pieces cut, my upper and lower bodices, as well as the binding strips we're going to use. Each binding strip is cut one and a half inches by the length of your bodice. And as you see, I have ironed a piece of interfacing one inch wide to the center of each binding. The grommets will require some interfacing so that they do not pull through the fabric. And we're not stretching this binding at all. It is sewn on one to one. So the interfacing will cause this to be a bit more stable, which is actually what you want. Okay, I've also folded over a little memory hem. Let me see if I can bring this up and show you. I have folded over a quarter inch, just ironed it to put a little memory hem in there. So after we attach it, when we go to fold this over, it'll already be done for us. So we're lining up our binding, right side of our binding to the wrong side of our bodice. And that's what I have pinned here on this one. I'll do the same for this one. So I have that all pinned and I'm going to serge or sew the binding to the bodice. Here we're all set up on the serger. I'm using my Baby Lock Triumph. My differential feet is on normal and I'm using a small stitch width, 4.5. And for stitch length, I'm set at about two and a quarter, maybe two and a half. This is a quarter inch seam allowance, so I'm just gonna run it on the edge of the presser foot there. Always making sure that it's lined up underneath, so I'm gonna go slow, slow my speed down a little, making sure that we are catching both pieces. When I get here, I'll double check that again. We're good. Here we have it surged on, on to the next step. So next step is we will flip our binding. So we have our bodice now right side up. We are going to flip it over and we are going to press along that surged edge. At the same time, we can fold down that memory hem we created and we can press that at the same time. So I'm going to go along here, give that a good press, both sides, pin it, and I'm gonna go all along the edge. We'll do that on the top and the bottom, and we will top stitch here, and we will top stitch here to hold this band where we want it. Here our binding is all pressed, both edges, top and bottom, and pinned down. And I brought over my grommets to see where they're going to sit in my band. I had pre-measured that, so I knew I wanted a finished inch band. I see it's going to look really nice there in the center. So I've decided I am going to use my sewing machine, not my cover stitch, because I just want one line of top stitching on each edge, not two. I want the grommets to be the star of this band, not the top stitching. So I'm going to go over the sewing machine and sew just a top stitch right here. You don't have to worry about this stretching. This is a loose fitting dolman style. So there's positive ease here across the chest. So it doesn't have to stretch. So using your straight stitch machine is perfectly fine. Over at the sewing machine, I have attached my zipper foot to my sewing machine. That zipper foot will allow me to get a really close top stitch. I just wanna catch that surged edge under there. So I have plenty of room for my grommets and they'll look beautiful. We're doing the bottom edge first. I'm just following along the edge of the presser foot so that I can get as close to that edge as I can.
now we're ready to top stitch the top edge the same way. I flipped my zipper foot to the other side so I can get right along just as we did previously. So we have our bands sewed on and top stitched at the top and bottom like I showed you. Grommets come in many different sizes, also called eyelets. They come in many different sizes. I am using the quarter inch, which here on the Dritz package they call them large eyelets. And they also come in many colors. There's gold tone, silver tone, and even this antique brass. And they have two parts. There's this taller one and this more shallow one and they go together when you put them on. So it's a two-piece grommet, and I'm gonna show you how we're going to do that. So I want to show you how to install a grommet if you've never done it before. So rather than work on the cumbersome garment that we have, and I'll be all thumbs trying to get a good tight video shot, I've created a sample. As you see, we've got the band here with the interfacing in it, just like we do in our garment. You're going to need a pen or a marking, tool of some kind. I like to use my seam ripper. These little embroidery scissors that curve upward, those are great for cutting out the holes for the grommets, but any small little scissor will work. And then you need your grommet. Your grom when you purchase your grommets, you can purchase them in two ways, a refill pack or a starter pack. I purchased them on Wawak, and I'll put that link for you in the description box, but they're very inexpensive and you can buy the pack that comes with the tool. And it's very inexpensive. It's like two or three dollars for this pack. And these are the tools that you'll need to install your grommets. And then I have this mallet. I, as you can see, it's been loved by some paint and I think I probably borrowed that from my husband's toolbox, but we share. Okay, so this is everything that you need. And here's what you're going to do. First, you're going to decide where you want your grommets. And you can mark those with tailor chalk or whatever, or pen, I mean, you're going to cut through that mark. I'm doing everything in pen so that you can see it. So you'll take your less deep part of your grommet. There's this one, which has a deeper edge, and then there's the more shallow. So you're gonna take the more shallow edge and you're going to put it right where you want it in the center. And then take your pen or your marking tool and just hold it down and make a circle there so you know where to cut. So I've done that. Now over here, then I've gone ahead and cut that out using these little curved scissors. First I poked it with my seam ripper and then I cut around that circle pretty much. Now remember, there's interfacing in here because we don't want this to stretch. We, want it, we don't want these grommets to pull our garment down. So it might take a little doing to cut through that, but once you get that through, now it's time to install the grommet. Taking the deeper end from the right side of the garment, you will put that in the hole, turn it over, and then just move the fabric around that little deep part of the grommet. Very easy once you've cut it. Then you'll take your more shallow piece and you'll put it right over that. So now you've got your two pieces together. And if you stay right here, Mark, I'll bring this over. This is the bottom part. This is the tool that you'll use. It has a little indentation. You lay this while holding it, lay that in, and it will just follow, it will find the groove. It has found the groove. Then you take this, I guess it's an anvil, and you see it's got a little knob which will fit right in the center. I'll take my handy dandy mallet and give it a couple of whacks. That should do it, one for good luck. Perfectly installed grommet. I spaced my grommets every two inches and I just did that here on my grid. So here I have attached all of the grommets and you see on the first row, I've attached them every two inches. I've done the same on the bottom row, but I've offset it from the front so that when we thread it, we'll get that effect we're looking for, the crisscross effect. So here we are set up to cut out the back. Remember the Labella Donna uses the same pattern piece for the front and back. 
The only difference here is the neckline. So here's where I put that piece back down for the back neckline and I'll hold it here with my pattern weight and I'll cut here for the back. Also for the front, we're going to have this half inch of space where it's going to have the lacing. So I need that back piece to be the same length. So I've placed the two pieces a half inch apart. I'll still cut it as one piece. I'm not cutting this here like I did on the front, but I did space it the right way and I'll cut here. Back here on this cut edge, I have drawn with my Taylor's chalk, and you may not be able to see it in the video, but I've drawn a half inch seam allowance out from this edge. I'm going to cut along that. I need to have a finished edge on this right here where this separation is so that this is not a raw edge since this will not be sewn together here. It'll be held together by the lacing. So I'm going to cut this a half inch bigger and then I'm going to fold it over and hem that so that I have a clean edge here. And then I will sew the two pieces on with my sewing machine. From here, stop, back stitch from there, down to the edge. So I'm all ready to cut out my back piece. So here's the back bodice. Remember when we added that half inch seam allowance to the cut edge? I've surged it, folded it over, and basted it. That way, on the side where it's open in the front will have a nice clean edge. Now I'm going to put everything right sides together, sew along the shoulder seams and sew down that edge on both sides. Now we have sewn down both sides. And just right here, I'm gonna show you, I top stitched between the band just to keep this part here from flipping out. We have a nice finished edge. Next, we're going to create a neckband. So you'll measure around at the seam allowance, not here at the raw edge with three eighths of an inch in or a quarter inch, I'll use a quarter inch seam, all the way around to get your circumference. We're going to take about 87 and a half percent of that and we're going to cut our neckband at that length with the stretch going along that length. And I like my neckbands a little more narrow so I'm going to cut it at 1.75 inches. So it'll be 1.75 by 87.5% of whatever that number is all the way around. And then we'll sew on our knit neckband in the traditional way. I don't need to recreate that here for you. I have a video just on sewing a knit neckband. I will link that in the description box. So if you're unfamiliar with that, you can go there, you can watch it. I explain it very thoroughly and that would be very helpful. So here I have a strip cut for the lacing and it is and it's one and three quarter inches by 60 inches. Then I'm just going to fold it right sides together, sew down the long end, and then just turn the tube. I'll iron it nice and flat, and then that will be our lacing for our grommets. And now we are ready to do our lace effect. You don't have to worry about the ends. You don't need to close those ends or sew them off. We'll tie that at the end or tuck it inside. So I'm going to start by threading this through on the inside. And then I'm just gonna bring it over. So this one's going to go over. My arm's probably in your way there. And I'm just gonna keep going. And I'll thread this one on the inside. And then I'll go pulling this through. It'll just pull through. So over, under, over, under, over, under. You just keep going. It takes a little doing. And then I like to straighten it out so I have the seam going all the same way. And then I'll go under this one and I'll keep going. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread all that and then I'll be back to show you the finished product. At this point, we are all threaded with our lace detail and it looks Awesome. Now I'm going to show you how to make the bishop sleeve. When I originally cut the pattern, I cut on the three quarter length sleeve line because I didn't really know where I wanted that bishop sleeve to start and I knew that I could always shorten it. There is a short sleeve cut line on the pattern, but I felt that might be a little too short and I was right. So what I've done is I've taken my sleeve up halfway in between the short sleeve 
and that three-quarter sleeve that's in the pattern. And that's what we have here. In order for the bishop sleeve to get that billowy effect, you want it to be wider as it goes down your arm, and then we will put a cuff on it, and we will gather that sleeve at the bottom and attach the cuff so it billows over that and gives us that relaxed, slouchy, really pretty, on-trend sleeve. So what you'll need to do is you want to take the measurement of your sleeve opening. So you just measure here and of course double it. And that will be where we'll start for the sleeve. I want to have a little tiny bit of fullness here and then more as it goes down. So take this measurement and I added a quarter inch seam allowance plus I added an inch. I'm going to gather that one inch and it's just a little bit but it's enough to start the fullness. So this measurement which for me came to 14. Then I added an inch for 15 plus a quarter inch seam allowance. So I have 15 and a quarter. Okay, so let's move over here to some tracing paper. And here I have cut out a rectangle. This is 15 and a quarter inches across. I tried on our new top and I measured where that sleeve starts on my arm and I measured down to my wrist bone. I don't, now that's too short if you're going to hem up a sleeve, but I'm going to add a cuff because we want to pull that up and make it really billowy. So I've measured from here where it falls on my arm to my wrist. And for me, that was 12 inches. So that's how long our pattern is going to be. So I have 15 and a quarter by 12. And then I've marked a line one inch down because I'm going to slash this pattern, but I need to have this little bit of space here. I've marked a line one inch across and then I've marked a line straight down the center. Each of these lines on either side of the center line is just divided somewhat equally. Now I'm going to take my scissor and I'm going to cut this pattern along each of these lines from here all the way down. Here I have my rotary cutter that is marked with a ribbon. This way I know it is only for paper. And I'm cutting from the bottom and I'm going to stop at that top line. And then I'm going to come over and do it for each line. Cut the pattern right here up into that line, but not through it, so I've created a hinge. It just makes it easier to slash and spread these pieces of paper. I've taped them down here in various places to keep them from floating around. Here I have this nice tracing paper, and I laid it over that pattern we created, and then I took a marker so you could see it, and I just trace around the outside of those lines. I've just straightened up where they've curved because we just need a straight sleeve here. We're attaching a cuff to it and we're going to be gathering it. So now I'm just going to cut around the black marker. I've taken my pattern and I folded it in half straight down the middle so that I can cut this sleeve on the fold. So I'm working with the remnants of my fabric. This is all I've had left. I have one more left for the other sleeve. I folded it in half, and now I'm going to cut two on the fold. I've taken my bishop sleeve pattern piece, cut it out on the fold, and then I've surged along the long edge. Now I'm going to run basting stitches on each of the open edges. Here's our sleeve. We have gathering stitches at the bottom as well as gathering stitches at the top. And now I'm going to turn the sleeve inside out and we're going to slip it over the sleeve lining up the underarm seam with this seam here slip it on here so we have the smaller end which is going to attach to the sleeve we're going to line up the seams just like that clip it and find the center. Well, we know the center of the bodice sleeve is there and the center of this is here. 
So we're going to clip that together before we begin to pull those basting stitches. Now the difference is only an inch. So you're gonna gather those basting stitches and it's going to be very little bit, but it's just enough so that we start to get the idea that we're doing a bishop's sleeve. We have it all clipped together. I'm just gonna serge right around here and then we'll have those two parts connected. We will come back, cut our cuff, sew our cuff to our sleeve. And then the only thing we have left to do is hem. Time to create our cuffs. Here I'm just using a piece of paper for my pattern. So I've measured around my wrist and then added a little bit of seam allowance. And that will be the greatest stretch. So that will be the part that goes around my wrist. That will be the, I'll make sure I cut it that way. And then I've measured that I want my finished cuff to be about three inches. So I need to double that to six because we fold it in half. So here I have a piece of paper that I cut to those measurements and I folded it in half. And that is now going to be my pattern. So I have my fabric on the fold and I'm just going to cut that. I have my cuff cut out, turned right sides together and I have it clipped along the short edge. I'm just gonna go ahead and serge that. Okay, our cuff is serged. Now I'm just going to take one of those open ends, turn it right sides together, matching up your seams and put one on one side and one on the other. And just make it even all the way around so we have a pretty cuff. And now I want to mark this cuff in half. So that's opposite from the seam. And I'm just gonna put, well not there, <laughs> on the raw edge. I'm just gonna put a little clip here to show that that's the center. Here I've gathered the bottom of my sleeve to fit my cuff. And I'm going to take my cuff and turn it this way so that the raw edges will be together, right side of the sleeve, right side of the cuff. And I'm going to want to match up the side seam with the underarm seam. So we'll slide this on. First thing I do is get the seams together. So we found the seam. It's a lot of fabric, so it'll just take some work here. And get these seams going in different directions. And just go ahead and pin that. I'm gonna be working with pins here instead of clips because we're going to need a lot of them and the clips get very heavy and very bulky. Generally, I'm very pro-clip. Okay, and then we're going to find the opposite edge of the sleeve and we're going to clip it or pin it to that opposite edge of the cuff. Now you can see we have all these gathers. So now we have to go and pin with a lot of pins this gathered sleeve to the cuff. Over here at the sewing machine, I am set up for basting. Normally, I just go right to my serger, but when you have this many gathers, you're trying to get into the small of an area, they will become ungathered as you try to unpin as you are serging. So I'm just gonna do a quick basting stitch first to set us up. Now, there are a lot of pins here. It's a very small area. I'm sure my hands are gonna get in the way, but I will do the best I can trying to stay out of the way, at least for a few stitches here. And you have to go slow because these pins want to get in the way of the needle and these pins up top and down the bottom. So it's, you know, it's not the easiest thing, but it's a good idea. Basting. And then I'm going to come to this pin and I'm going to pull this a little bit more forward and just try to base to the next pin. And I know my hands are in the way. It's a very small area. And you have to maneuver a lot and keep those gathers. And I'll just keep doing this. Now that we have our cuff basted on, 
we could just go right over to the serger and serge that on. Not a you're still working in a very small area, so you're going to have to go slow with your serging. You're just going to serge right along, moving that cup ever so slightly as you need to. Let's see if I can let you see this. It's cutting a little off, and then we have to bring that forward. I'm not stretching it. I'm just bringing it up past that presser foot because it's very small. It's just a cuff. Flip that up. And if my hands are in front of the camera, I'm really sorry. It's my videographer is not able to help me today. So doing the best I can. Thank you so much. And we're coming back around and we'll do the same thing we did before. These are just basting stitches. I'm just letting my knife take care of that. We're cutting off the tail. So I'm sliding left and then sinking my needles, turning 90 degrees and chaining off. Now we have our cuff on and it looks so pretty with all those gathers. This is really coming together, I'm so excited. Last two things we need to do, I need to top stitch the neckband and I need to hem the bottom of the shirt. Okay, so you can see I've surged on our neckband and I've pressed the seam allowance toward the body of the garment. Now I want to top stitch that. So you want that seam allowance to stay nice and flat and it also is a nice detail. When I top stitch, I'm going to use my cover stitch and I'm going to use a two needle narrow cover stitch. I want this top stitching to come just under the band so that it actually sews this seam allowance down. Some people like to have one needle on the band and one needle on the garment. It's personal preference. I don't care for that look. I really like both underneath the seam. So let's come over to the cover stitch and I'll show you how we set that up. Okay, so I'm at my cover stitch now and I'm actually using the Baby Lock Triumph on cover stitch. And I've got the narrow two needle to the left, which means that this third is empty. I've got, I am starting, this is the shoulder seam, the back seam is right here, so I'm starting just forward of the back seam. I've got my seam allowance pressed to the left and we're going to be checking as we cover stitch this that that stays to the left and you just need to check that every once in a while. Following these toe markings, so this is my left needle, this is my next needle. I'm going to be lining up the seam of the band just to the right of this second needle here so that right in between two and three so that I am cover stitching exactly where I want to go. So I'm going to try to stay out of the way here as my videographer does a bang up job. All right, I'm gonna go nice and slow. And I am now not, I am not looking at the needles. I am watching this seam hit right in between these two marks. Checking to make sure my seam allowance stays to the left. And also that I'm not pushing this, but I'm making sure that it's flat. So it's very gentle. Now I'm approaching that shoulder seam. So I'm gonna release a little pressure on my fabric so that we get over that seam nicely. That is a thick seam. So I'm gonna reach over here to my needles and I'm going to do two turns or three maybe with the hand wheel until I get over that thick surged seam. And now we can go back to using the foot. Here we go. So when I get back here, I can see those nets that I started with. 
We're just going to cut those now. Those are locked in, you don't have to worry about them, but we wanna get them out of the way now. And this is the looper thread, which I can easily get rid of. Now, as you see, I'm using a clear cover stitch foot. And the reason I am is because I want to be able to go right over these beginning stitches as best as I can, and this will allow me to see where I started. We're gonna go over about a half an inch or an inch, and I'll show you how we finish that off, okay? Now, these beginning threads, I am just going to make sure that they're following this first and second needle mark on the toe so we can go over as best we can. And that's good. Now my needles are at the highest position. If they were not, I would just turn my hand wheel towards me. Let me show you that. Bring my needles all the way up. And then I'm going to raise my presser foot. Okay, we're set. Using this screwdriver, the set screwdriver that comes with the machine, I'm just releasing some tension on the needle threads. And I can do that because my foot is up. Lifting my toe, I'm taking this and I'm putting it behind the needle threads and pulling them forward. When I get them forward, about to here, I'm just gonna cut those. I'm not left-handed, so let me. <laughs> Let me switch over there. I was trying to stay out of the way of the camera. I'm just going to cut those. And now we're ready to release it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull back into the left, and that will pull my threads under the garment where we can then just tie them off. Back and to the left. I always put my finger here because I don't want to have any of those threads pull and tunnel a little. So I just gently place my finger here and pull out. And this one thread that's still not cut is your looper thread. So you just cut it even with the needle threads. Now I will go and tie that off. But I just wanna show you here, you can see this on camera, where we went over those beginning stitches. It looks really great. It's not perfect, but it's really good. And here we have our top stitching exactly where we want it, just under that band. That's gonna look, that just looks great. I'll tie those off. So why I have you here, I just want to show you that I'm going to hem the garment in the same way. The only thing I'm going to do different is I'm going to use a wide cover stitch. So I'll remove this middle needle and just move it over here to the third position. But it gets done in the exact same way. And I've already done that. You don't need to see me sew a great big circle at the bottom. But just come over here and let me show you that. That's the wide cover stitch. Prior to pressing my hem up, I just went to my serger and I surged that raw edge. It just makes for a nice flat finish. And because this is a curved hem, I used a little differential feed when I surged that. I did it at 1.3, pulls it in just enough that when I iron it, I get this beautiful hem. Now that we have our grommets in and our lacing done, I just wanna show you how we're going to deal with the ends of that. So after I have this all spaced out the way I want it, and there's always some play here. I've knotted the end of my lacing. I'm going to hand tack it here to the side seam with my needle and thread, just so it doesn't pop out and so it lays nicely. And then I have this knot here. In case I ever need to adjust it, I can just take those hand tacks out, unknot it, pull or give a little bit more. I'll cut it off right underneath the knot. This is a knit. It doesn't fray, so we don't have to worry about that. Well, we're back with the finished creation. I'm so pleased at how this came out. I really think it couldn't have come out any better for me. And I hope that you love it and that you're inspired to try this or to try your own Pinterest remake. All the things that you've pinned on your board that you wanted to try. And I wanted to give you one or two other little things you can do to make it your own. So you know how we made the bands here out of the same fabric with the interfacing. I was thinking you could do the same thing with matching twill tape. And I'm probably going to do this. I want to make a one in navy, in solid navy. So I can use twill tape here instead of having to make the bands. The twill tape is the same size. Now the only thing that you'll need to do is when you cut that upper bodice and lower bodice, you'll need to add some seam allowance. Three eighths of an inch, half an inch, whatever you're comfortable sewing to the bottom of this and to the, so to the bottom of the upper bodice and to the top of the lower bodice. 
and turn that under. And then when you put your twill tape on, you can just top stitch the twill tape at the top and the bottom. So you can fold that band under and you can sew that, you can just baste it because you're going to cover that edge here. The idea is, of course, you don't want a raw edge. So it's, this is not a binding, it's just going to sit on the top. But it would be terrific and grommets will go through there nicely. And it's also doesn't stretch so you don't need the interfacing. I thought that would be awesome. That's a, And you know, you can get twill tape in a variety of colors. You can get it in prints. So you could have a sweet little print up there. And one other thing you can do is if you don't want to make your own lacing, which can be a pain sometimes, or you want to just be more creative, you can buy lacing. This is what they put to go through hoodies. You can buy this in solids, in prints, in different widths, in different fabrics. This is sweater knit. I could have easily used this if I wanted just that deeper pink but I was trying to recreate exactly what I saw so I could bring it to you that way. But, but I actually played with the idea of doing this and I could even change that out. And it comes in variety. And here's one that's in a white print with some pink and blue. And that would look super cute. So there's choices to really make this your own. You can also get it, uh, this is black, it may not show up, but this is flat twill tape. And that would work through these grommets as well. And this comes in a variety of colors. So we talked about putting grommets in today and all the colors they come in. We learned how to make a lower bishop sleeve. We learned how to do the lacing. I think it's been a successful day on Sojourns. Thanks for joining me in my Pinterest recreation. I hope to do this again. If you have inspiration that you'd like to see how to make, I don't know if I can, but I'd love to see it and I'd love to work it through together. So until next time, happy sewing.